uh, looking at some muscles of the hip region here. Firstly, uh, here we're looking at an anterior view of a left hip. Uh, we can see we've got lumbar vertebrae up here. So this muscle belly here is psoas major. Psoas minor is not on this model. If it was, there it would be a small muscle belly up, up this way up here, higher up in the lumbar region. Uh, and then there would be a, a skinny tendon running along the front of psoas major here. So psoas major, no psoas minor on this one. Then here, taking up the iliac fossa, coming all the way up towards the iliac crest there, is iliacus. But don't forget, once these two muscles pass deep to the inguinal ligament here, they're considered to have fused. So this is iliacus, this is psoas major, but this is iliopsoas. Considered to be one structure there once they pass the inguinal ligament. If we work around laterally, we go past sartorius and rectus femoris to come to the tensa fascia lata muscle, which is quite lateral there. And just beyond that, this fascia is actually covering part of gluteus medius. So we're actually already on gluteus medius here. This is the more anterior part that's safe to use for intramuscular injections. But we can see more of medius here. And just note that it comes all the way up, or almost right to the iliac crest there. So there's no bone showing there, just the, the top of the iliac crest there. So that's gluteus medius. And then, of course, we come to gluteus maximus, the largest, strongest muscle in the body. This fibre's almost horizontal, running down to join into the gluteal tuberosity on the femur, but then also to the iliotibial band or tract there, more superficially. Okay, so now if we remove gluteus maximus, we can see a bit more of medius, but we can't see minimus. So remember that minimus is deep to medius, but it's the same shape. So if medius has been removed, it can be tricky to know what you're looking at. And the way to tell is if you can see ilium here, if you can see a whole lot of bone here, then you're looking at minimus. If you can't see much bone here, you can only see the, the crest, then you know you're looking at medius. Medius comes all the way up to the ili iliac crest, attaching in between the anterior gluteal line, which is under here, and then the posterior gluteal line and iliac crest, which are there. So then from medius, we can then see piriformis, and then gemella superior, obturator internus, gemellus inferior, and then quadratus femoris. Now, if we could, in between these last two, we, if we could dig down in here a couple of centimetres, we'd find the tendon of obturator externus. But on most models and specimens, you can't do that, so it's not usually clearly visible. So again, gluteus medius, piriformis, then we have the two gemellus muscles here, either side of obturator internus. Now on many specimens, the, obturator, the part of obturator internus that you'll find here will be mostly or completely tendon. So often the only muscle fibres you can find here from a posterior point of view will be the two gemellus muscles, but sometimes there'll be a bit of muscle here of obturator internus. But most of the muscle belly of obturator internus, if you follow it along under the sacrotuberous ligament here, most of the muscle belly obturator internus is here. So it's seen from a medial point of view in the obturator uh, foramen here. So here's the obturator nerve and artery passing through the obturator groove in a, through a little hole in the obturator internus muscle there. So there's the muscle belly. It's running very much anterior to posterior. That's the, the direction that it runs in. As the obturator internus goes around the, um, the ischium there between the spine and the tuberosity, it goes around a 90 degree bend and then it goes out to the, towards the trochanter there on the femur. Right up. So you often can't see much of it on the specimen. So gemellus, superior, inferior, obturator internus in between. 